Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. So today we got a 5v5 cast coming your way. Going down on Neuroxis map generator. Pretty high level game, all things considered. Uh, the lowest rated player is Fairer and uh, Mill and Wise on teams 1 and 2 respectively with pretty much everybody else being above that 1500 skill level matchmaking threshold global rating etc uh, so we've got team one up at the top team two down at the bottom let's go ahead and introduce our players real quick and then we'll check out the map and talk about it a little bit so starting number one for team number one we've got regisol or reggie who's going seraphim opening first land back in i guess this is either air or kind of a eastward expansion kind of role uh to the south we've got angel of death uh, and it actually makes sense if you look at 3, 4, 7, H, etc. He's also going Seraphim opening first land. Shifting to the east, we have got Fergus1080, who is going Aeon opening first land. To the southwest, we've got Farer, who is going UEF opening first land. And last but not least, for team number one, we have Oblil. Oblil. Call him Obi. Uh, and he's going Seraphim opening first land. So three Seraphims, an Aeon, and a UEF there for team number one. Let's shift over to team number two, starting with Steck on his way to a northern expansion. Uh, he is going to be going at Cybran opening first land. And I actually misspoke. Steck is going to be the lowest rated player on team number two. Millenwise gets uh, second there. And I don't mean to dog on these guys because they're about my rating. So I'm, I'm not making fun of anybody at all. But... Next, we've got Terrari, who's going Cybran opening first land. So two Cybrans there for team number two. To the south, we have Sapir, who's going Aeon opening first land. And then we've got Matri, the resident 1800 there for team number two, who's going first land. Played quite a bit with Matri. Haven't played a whole lot with uh, Terrari, who would be the other higher rated player there for team number two. And then last but not least, we have Millenwise, who's going Cybran first land, second air. And again, I believe the rear guard air position here. Millen Wise, cool dude. I uh, played a game with him a couple days ago, and uh, he was like an angel over my shoulder because he got eliminated a little bit early and called my attention to a lot of things that I needed to be paying attention to in the air slot. So I'll, we'll see if that game gets cast that I sent it to Willow. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was a pretty good game, but we'll see how it ends up going. Early aggression here out from Terrari. Looking to block some of the uh, expanding expansion mexes there for Fergus. And it looks like we were right. So it looks like Regisol or Reggie in the back line, in the back line is going to be actually making an eastward expansion. So that leaves our buddy Angel of Death as kind of the main air player there for team number one. A couple of good choke points or good firebase opportunities in between these plateaus up on these ridge lines. But of course, lots of mass to fight over here in the middle. You don't have some of the, some of the time you get Neroxis maps. Uh, a lot of it is like condensed on one side and then you kind of have a dead zone and then you have all the mass for the other team up on the other side. Not this one. There's a good amount of mass that's worth fighting over. Good amount of mass that uh, can yield to some map control, some early, some early aggression, etc. We've actually got a drop out from Terrari pretty early on there at three and a half minutes looking to make its way up to the north and start uh, expanding to these. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve mexes. And he's currently denying four more to the south. But I don't see that being very long lived as Fergus is calm has started moving into position is going to get an engineer pick off, though. They're one of Fergus's expanding engineers and in a 20 by 20 like this, or actually this looks more like 15 by 15, but it takes a while for engineers to actually move across the map unless you're dropping. And Angel of Death actually with his own drop here goes immediately for a point defense where Terrari starts getting some of the factories up. Already got one factory up, so obviously had some mass in the bank or is just brute forcing it with build power. That is going straight to work on some labs to go in take out these engineers expanding out there for angel of death it looks like it is going to be expected that's three labs total engineers should die before they get a uh, factory up and angel of death realizes that and actually goes for a reclaim order bomber in from angel of death is going to get taken down by the interceptor screen there though 
Point defense, probably not going to go up. I think he's stalling a little bit too much right now or just doesn't have enough build power. So point defense also going to be denied three factories up from Terrari. That is a good hold or good uh, initial grasp of this northern, northeastern section there for team number two. And uh, team number one, not able to accomplish the same thing. Millen wise, uh, looks like he dropped once and has already got a second transport coming over as well to uh, deny uh, or to claim kind of this territory before it can get denied by team number one like Terrari did for his opponents. Got some air engagements happening here. Just little skirmishes though. Nothing really to be concerned about. And Fergus chilling down here with his commander for the time being. And Terrari grabbing some mexes with his comm right now. Looks like he's kind of making his way north. Wants to grab a hold of this with his commander as well. And even signaling to his ally Steck there that Steck needs to start moving as well. Because uh, it looks like he's going to be in a... That would make it a 2v2 situation here with Fergus as well as Reggie moving their commanders to start contesting. But four, five, six land factories now up there for Terrari. Bomber not even going to get a bomb off there from Fergus as Fergus has now engaged the enemy with his commander. Only light artillery there for Terrari. So as long as Fergus is paying attention, should be able to dodge the relatively easily, which he does. Terrari does get a mech, though. That's a pretty good consolation prize there. Means that Fergus has to build some more stuff, but he does have engineers that are making their way over. So not the end of the world by any stretch. And Terrari making some additional drops here, grabbing some of these mechs that are around the back lines. And we never really talked about reclaim, did we? So, doesn't look like a super heavy reclaim map. Uh, the reclaim counter, of course, is still busted. So, I mean, off offhand, looking at the map right now, some of it's already been scooped up, but doesn't look like a super heavy reclaim map with maybe 8 to 10k on the map at the outset. But Fergus, as well as Reggie, now moving in with their commanders. Terrari's calm down here towards the south. Everybody with vanilla commanders at this point. And actually a little bit of a ghetto gunship here, actually, from Terraria as well. Loaded those labs that he made earlier onto a transport. Good, quick thinking there from our resident 2000 level player. 1900 level player. That's actually getting some good damage in on Fergus. Dropping him down into the yellow. Not going to be able to clear it up as interceptor support now shows up. But still, good damage, and now that Terrari is in a two versus one commander situation, you need all the chip damage you can get, baby. Try and make things as advantageous for you as possible. Yeah, a little run by there from Reggie as well. And we haven't really talked about the rest of the map, but we do have a couple of players slugging it out here. Sapir with the gun range upgrade. Nope, God, that is gun speed. I'm stand corrected no gun range upgrade he's taking a little bit of a beating though as he's trying to push in here to obi give the man himself a little bit of a hello there as obi going for a tech 2 upgrade and meanwhile back up at the top terrari slugging it out two versus one stack just now moving his commander there on the mini map to help so we'll see how much the t1 that terrari has built up Quite a bit of infrastructure here at 10 land factories. So definitely has the capacity to pump that T1 out as long as he has the mass for it. And uh, he's going to need it. As luckily everybody is working with vanilla commanders. But you still don't want to be in a 2 versus 1 comm situation there. Stack is running. So the cavalry is on the way. Stack bringing some of his tech 1 forces as well. Terrari actually walking forward, getting a little bit aggressive here. Quite a few Auroras back here, though, for Fergus. They're going to start laying into that Cybern commander. As Terrari now shifts his focus there to Fergus, the cavalry has arrived in the form of the Tech 1 units here from Stack. But Terrari's starting to look pretty peaked there on health. 
almost down under that 2500 mutual destruction assured threshold reggie's still working at just under 8k fergus just under 5k so you don't want to get into a trade here as terrari now dropping pretty fast down under 1000 hp and ah uh, stack is not going to be able to get here in time to bail his buddy out here overcharge goes in and terrari is going to be the first one to get ejected from this game stack is moving in stack does have a gun upgrade on his commander so fergus as well as reggie need to think about whether they want to stay here or not i'm not sure if they've scouted the gun upgrade though we've even got a we've even got angel of death down here as well with his commander reggie going very aggressively here Going into the T1 there that is now, now belongs to Matri. This full share is enabled. And I think Reggie dies here. Gun upgrade on Steck's commander. As long as Steck pays attention, shifts target priority to snipe and then just doesn't lose line of sight. Reggie is, I think, history for this game. He is out of there. There's some pun that I could make there on regicide because it's commander and regisal just got regicided. Regisode. Is that a word? I think it's a word. It is now. It wasn't before. But up at the top, Stack continuing to be aggressive here. Still pretty healthy commander at about 7,500 HP and with that gun upgrade, He's feeling pretty good. He's got Tech 1 units of his own coming in behind. He's got Tech 1 units now streaming out from Matri's base. Unfortunately, that point defense whittling him down pretty quickly. And another point defense back here. As Stack now ticks back up into the green, enjoying the benefit there of that slightly higher Cybran HP regeneration on his commander. Down at the south, Obi and Sapir still slugging it out is Obi getting some point defense down a little bit of a point defense creep and that'll secure some of this reclaim field as long as Obi can get a good attack move out of his factory to get that slightly increased range I actually might go to split screen here so that we can watch both of these there's a lot happening on all sides of the map as Sapir goes for a little bit of a run by and Stack pressuring the forward manufacturing there from Fergus. Team number two making moves here in this game. Only 12 minutes in. One commander has died apiece. Regisle got a little bit too Issel up in his. Okay, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try and do that. I was going to try and be like a cool kid. And make a some izzle in my something or other joke. Now it's just turned into the failure is now the joke. So, haha. -ha. And we'll go back to single screen now. Match, we're trying to get a little bit of a run by here. We do have Fergus's tech one units in the vicinity. Gonna try and head them off. Some of it is gonna make it through though. Uh, pretty much all Mantis. So, all the artillery is bogged down back here in the supply lines. But with the fact that they have to carry all additional ammunition and everything like that, it just takes them a little bit longer to get places. But Fergus pulling his units leaves his Aeon tanks in a rather precarious position against the Cybran. And actually, I don't think Stack is gonna Stack's not gonna bite there. I think Stack could have probably crushed that force. Uh, but he's got other things on his mind down here as he's starting to pressure. Angel of Death's forward base, if you can call it that. It's really just a factory, a point in defense, and some engineers, but I'm going to give him some credit here. It's a forward base. It is a base of operations. An FOB. I know acronyms. Uh, meanwhile, Obi has decided to stop slugging it out here with his Tech 1 units and with his arch rival Sapir. He's actually moving his units up to towards the north. Looks like a little bit of a shift queue for a run by here, trying to get past Sapir's firebase, which is 
positioned really closely to this cliff leaves a little bit of a gap up here as Sapir now shifts a lot of his units to defend against that. There are Ilshivas though in this mix there for Obi. And I am not seeing any tech two out for Sapir yet, just the Aeon tech one. Ah, you can start to see the mighty Ilshiva go to work. Carving up that Aeon heresy. Yeah, that's a bloodbath for the Aeon. I mean, some Seraphim units are dying just because tanks are strolling a little bit too close, but Ilshiv is trading really, really well. About to get cut off here. Sapir's commander, which it does have a full gun upgrade as well as overcharge. Starting to throw some lovely overshot, overcharge shots out. And that's one thing that the mighty Ilshiva cannot deal with is uh, the overcharge. Whenever a commander gets angry and has a lot of energy, it starts screaming. And those screams are really, really loud. They don't happen very often, but they do happen occasionally. And whenever they do happen, they are uh, crushing. So a nice little reclaim field here that has now been just deposited for Sapir. Uh, looks like he does have a couple engineers here that are got patrol orders to go and start vacuuming that reclaim up. Might be close to floating some mass, so he's using patrol instead of attack move, which is definitely a viable alternative. And the control of the map, you can start to see it taking effect here on the eco as team number two up by about 20,000 mass over team number one. But I feel like they need to get a little bit more done with this base. Because right now it feels like they're just streaming Tech 1 units in. And I don't think the trades are great. Just because Angel of Death is out here fighting with his commander. Same with Fergus. And Stack only has 11 kills on his commander. You compare that to the 62 there for Angel of Death. So more proactive commander usage here from team number one has led to I think a slightly better trades gunships from angel of death out but are going to be mopped up by ASF there from mill and wise as stack now starting to get some firebase actions some Cerberus point defense setting up back behind his commander as he starts retreating but Natha is in over the top as well as gunships Mill and Wise's ASF are actually running back to safe skies again, but there is flak in this mix. So Stack should be just fine here. Even has some interceptors around. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. Unless something heavier comes up like a strat. A caster cursed at him. Caster cursed. A caster cursed at him. He's going to eat that one to the face. That took out all the AA as well as the point defense. Stack is in trouble. As Milanois now getting his air force back up towards the north, but this another strat is going to connect. Should only take one more, maybe two more. Actually, definitely only one more now. That, that gunship has showed up there for Angel of Death. But strat seems to have been called off there for Obi. He wants to let Stack die the slow death of gunship. Nope, just not. Nice dodge there, though, for Steck. I don't think he dodged this one, though. As Steck is now out of there. Team 2 goes down another player. Leaving us in a 4 versus 3 scenario. Full share, of course, is on. I would imagine Matry is going to be taking the reins here on this, on this here northern base. But uh, no tech two. It actually matched. You just control King everything. It looks like so. With the uh, commanders here from both Angel of Death as well as Fergus with gun upgrades and no tech two, uh, makes it pretty difficult to hold it off. So I think Matry is going to look at that as a sunk cost and just say, hey, it did its job. It got us some map control. Got us up by 45 masses. Sapir actually now getting hit by these strap bombers. He's got a lot of MAA though in there. As well as some static flak there on the ground. So I think Obi is going to back his strat up and look for a better opportunity there on Sapir. 
Zapier's still very healthy, over 10,000 HP, so never really in danger with Millenwise's ASF around as well. Millenwise just milling around with those ASF. And Gunship's gonna clean up the last bit of resistance up here from Terrar or, uh, from Terrari's old base inherited by Matri and then Control Cade. And Angel of Death gonna set up shop up here. Got his commander headed up there. Actually, his commander is headed away from it now. But he is still gonna set up base. He's got engineers working on land factory up there. As we did have a little bit of an air skirmish here between Obi and Millenwise. Looks like Obi came out slightly better. Millenwise, but I think Obi is splitting a little bit of attention here. Oh, he did inherit, uh, he's not splitting attention. He inherited, um, Reggie's base. That makes sense. Nice little air grid. So four factories up. I wonder how Millenwise is doing. So Millenwise got two factories up. Is actually going for another power generator and then going for his third factory. So a scale issue there for Millenwise right now. Not going to be able to replenish forces quite as quickly leaves Obi a little bit more open to do whatever Obi wants and Obi has also got Tech 3 land as well. Tech 3 land also there out from Farer. What other tech do we've got? What other fun things? So we do have, all right, so that's going to be Tech 3 land there for Fergus and Tech 3 air for Angel of Death. Angel of Death focused, I think, a little bit more on the Tech 2 air phase, and then Tech 3 with a lot of gunships. And you can see these gunships actually doing, getting some value here as they cleaned up this base and uh, taking out some mexes as well as some radars. That combined with a lone Ilshiva there from Obi. As uh, Matri, who is also a Tech 3 air now. Gonna have to divert some forces to deal with that. At the same time, is going for a run by down here with some Harbs on Ferrer's forward manufacturing facilities. Three Tech 2 mixes, two factories, a fourth Tech 2 mix down, maybe. Nope, I'm gonna leave that one alive. Give him a little bit of a glimmer of hope before he yanks it away from him right out from under his face. Brutal. Matri just playing with his food right now. It's like, oh, you want a Tech 2 Max? No, can't have a Tech 2 Max. <laughs> but forces from Fergus now starting to get into some potentially sensitive stuff here. There are some bricks here from Matri that are going to be able to clean this up eventually. So for Fergus, it's how much damage can I do before these bricks just absolutely crush my tinfoil tanks. Now, looks like he's going to get some mass storage for his trouble. Tech 2 Max is going to possibly go down. Yep, a couple Tech 2 Max is down. So, Fergus saw the evil that came out of Matry earlier and was like, how, how would you like it if you lost some Tech 2 Maxes? I bet you wouldn't like it at all. There you go. Lose your Tech 2 Maxes. Meanwhile, bricks are running about as fast as you would think a unit called a brick would be able to move which is not very quick <laughs> and harbingers in the north gonna get headed off by titans before they do too much more damage they did pick up a pick up a mechs right here as well and i can't believe this tech one army is still alive sapir are gonna have to deal with this with his commander guncom with overcharge it'll be able to deal with that just fine there's no tech two units in the in the vicinity and Obi's strats are a little too far away at this point. My back has been itching a lot lately. I don't know what. I don't know what's going on. Another Tech 2 mech's going to go down there for Sapir. He does have a Tech 3 mech back here. That would have been a better target. But doesn't have really the damage to be able to get through that anyway. Matri also expanding down here. Too. And we didn't talk about this, but Ferrer was busy on this side and actually set up a good contestation of this little corner. And Fergus, with more Tech 1 units, 
well as a couple of, or one Harbinger. Two Harbingers, actually. Came up here to try and tangle with Matry's bricks once again. Are going to be able to pick off this land factory? Oh, uh, maybe not. Oh, land factory survives. But did take out some mexes. So, lots of mexes dying. People just, you know, just brutal. Just murdering civilian buildings left and right. People who play this game are animals. No heart, no soul, no conscience. And yes, I include myself there. Uh, so now we're starting to get some more tech here out from Fergus instead of just the occasional Harbinger. We got some sniper bots that are in here as well. That'll definitely help out with the bricks. Fergus, or, uh, Ferrer going for a tech three upgrade on his commander. He's got gun as well as tech two, so pretty chunky calm as Sapir gets some artillery past Ferrer's main line there. Not quite sure how that made it past. Might be a radar issue. Might be a skill issue. If it's me, it's definitely a skill issue. But Tech 2 Mex is now under attack as well. As we've got a Tech 2 Engineer that is now the defending force that has reclaimed one of the artillery. Matry's Harbs continuing to just be all over the map. This guy literally is everywhere. I'm even having trouble keeping up as the caster on everywhere where his harps are going. He's cleaned up this area. He's fighting this area. It's making it very, very difficult for team number one to expand to either wing of the map. Although while he's making it very difficult, it's Fergus is making it equally difficult for him to hold any of his positions at home as Fergus once again starts advancing with a mixture of tech one, a couple of shields, and then handful of tech three units as well it's 25 minutes in though i think the aurora has kind of played its usefulness out a little bit i don't know that's just me maybe the aurora like are the aurora really really good late game and i just like don't know because they they kind of look like shit against the bricks i don't know that's just me i am biased against the AR. Yeah, they don't look like they trade very well. They look like they're dying. Like, really quickly. So now have a lone off them out from Obi. I think Team 1 has got to make a commitment here for some higher tech units. Okay, like, just, you know, the 1995 Civic that you drove whenever you were, whenever you were younger. You know, great car, great car, but they make better cars now. <laughs> As uh, Ilshi's going to get mopped up here. Let's actually take a look at what his manufacturing look like. Okay, well, Obi destroyed a lot of his manufacturing. Um, he is focusing actually on an Awasa right now. And let's look at what the air situation looks like. So 60 ASF there for Obi. And Millenwise is working with 73. So Millenwise actually catching up on air has scaled up production quite well. Matry, though, with his own Air Force, that we shouldn't forget about, has 50 ASF of his own. So I don't think Obi has air control by himself. Angel of Death working with... Uh, oh, Angel of Death actually has some ASF. Let's, let's include him. Let's not leave anybody out. 23. So, not terrible, but... Team number one building in Awasa right now at about a 50 ASF deficit. So, going to have to pick their battle here. Uh, Mill and Wise wandering over a, a Sam site, though, is going to help. <laughs> going to help Team One's cause here. As Mill and Wise actually goes for the air crush and then second guesses himself twice, then goes in. All right. It looks like Obi, as long as Mill and Wise can turn this correctly, Obi should die here. Although he is fighting over Sam's, but Obi's still going to go down. So 
So it's going to be a nice air crush there for Millen Wise. Actually, right as that Awasa finishes up there for Obi. So that's, that's not what you want to see. Oh, hell, we got strats out for Matry. Where are these strats going? Great timing on the air crush there. There are a handful of Sams, but some of these strats are going to get their bombs off. And they are going right for Angel of Death's air production. Going to take out the entirety, actually, of Angel of Death's air production, including the HQ. That didn't feel great. You just lost an air fight, and then you lost one of your players' ability to produce any air. That that feels pretty bad, man. Feels bad. And then experimental out. So second one of the game here. We got a monkey lord out there for Matry. And he has got quite a T3 force to go along with it. Several bricks. How many bricks is that? 17 bricks there. 17 bricks plus a monkey. It's pretty good. The zoo, I think they call that a really good time. And Sapier also pressuring pretty well here with this Tech 3, Tech 1 mixture of an army here. Got some Harbs, got some Snipers. Taking down this Sam, which already has three ranks of veterancy, actually. These Harbs are going to start threatening Mexes. Sniper is getting deployed there from Fergus. Up in the north. That's going to be one Mex down. Point defense trying to get up here from Obi. But, yep, yeah, Obi having a hard time getting it up. Which I think is something that we're all really, really scared of. Uh, as Tech 2 Mexes go down, this is a great little run by here from Sapier. Definitely paying dividends. And the mass differential actually is flopped. Team 2 is actually behind by a good amount. I might have been reading that incorrectly earlier as well. Unless it flipped itself over. But I think I was actually reading it incorrectly. So, alright, team number 1 actually playing the long eco game here. While team number 2 is pushing with a lot of land. Sapier finishes an experimental of his own. I've got another push down here from Matry that is starting to materialize. Sapier finishes a GC back in his own base, starts working on another one. The monkey as well as the bricks are pushing in. Go to split screen to watch this madness unfold. Actually, Matry's also going to be pushing down there. Matry just pushing everywhere. And we'll see if that Athoda gets up. Harbs are going to be able to do a good amount of damage to the build power, but there's a lot of point defense here that Obi actually did get up in time. Important differentiation. Because it's, you know, it's better late than never whenever it comes to getting it up. And that Athoda is going to survive. It is going to take some damage there. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Monkey as well as the Bricks are taking a pause here. Whoops. As Harps from Matry losing an argument with the cliff happens to the best of us. There's a cliff that I like to. There's a cliff at one of the places I like to go mountain biking on. Just kind of terrifying because I'm afraid of heights, uh, but it's great. I like to stand at the bottom and shout at it. You know, I could write my own parody of "Shout at the Devil." Dun, 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 dun. Shout at the cliff. <laughs> All right, Matry doing simultaneous pushes on both sides. Sapier also running another push down the middle. Uh, these Harbs gonna run into Ravager fire. Could dip them into the water, save their lives. Actually, wait a minute. They took that away. Either that or it was never amphibious. I remember in the campaign it used to be amphibious. Maybe that's why I used to think about that. But it actually says that they're not amphibious anymore. I think everybody else's is amphibious. All right, Monkey's gonna go down to the GC. And 
The brick's all focused on the GC. The GC got a lot of good kills there with its um, gravity hands. By a lot, I mean five. Might as well go back to single screen now. Sarb's making a good inroad. Made it past the Ravagers. Got a whole army in tow here. They are able to shoot it over their shoulders. Matri once again killing Tech 2 Mexes here. The heartless son of a bitch that he is. <laughs> uh, but the eco gap is starting to widen. So 10,000. Wait, is that right? No, that's 100,000. 100,000 mass up there for team number one. What are they using it on? Well, quantum gateways for one thing. That's not very exciting. Yawasa got killed somewhere. I must have missed that during the uh, simultaneous pushes. But Obi either lost his Awasa or Control K'd it. Air looks still to be firmly in team number two's control at this point. As Harb's now making their way in. I think what I think actually the almost all of the eco differential is how much mass these aggressive maneuvers have put into team number one's pockets like this hard run by like this is gonna do like it's gonna do work but like, it's also gonna give a lot of mass and i don't know if this is if these attacks are doing enough damage to team number one it's like if we look at this like you're gonna kill four tech two mexes Actually, a couple Tech 3 mexes as well. But you're going to kill some mexes, but, like, the reclaim here is enough to, like, completely rebuild that. So, I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it or not. Now that I'm thinking about it, it looks not worth it. But, you know, actually, whoa. Sparer goes down to a GC from Sapir. I missed that. Ithoda coming in from Obi in the north. That's going to be able to take out that GC. Apologies for missing that one. I was busy pontificating about the importance of run buys. Yeah, so the Harb's going to be able to... I mean, they're able to take out some mexes, but ultimately they're going to die up here. I don't know. This run by might be worth it. Because I think they've killed enough mexes and they've forced enough PD up in response that it might have ended up being worth it there for Matry on that one is we have an air engagement once again and Millenwise and Matry caught Obi napping here Obi was not ready to say hello there looked like he was getting ready to cover his Ithoda but I think that Ithoda is going to go down to the GC as well as the combination of the Harbingers of Doom sounding their trumpets throwing their green lasers out so you need to kill that Athoda and then get the hell out of there before that lightning storms. <laughs> well. Matry, uh, a little bit of friendly fire action there from Strat Bombers. Does begin working on leveling that forward fire base, though. As we have another air engagement here, Millen Wise just not giving Obi any time to even breathe here. This one, though, he fought. he's fighting over a lot of Tech 3 AA. And as that gets, as that Tech 3 AA gets more and more, as Obi is continuing to build lines of additional Tech 3 AA around here, you need to start picking your battles here. Also not landing in front of a Ravager. Atri also with another run by up to the north. Got a couple bricks that are... We'll start causing some problems here for Angel of Death. As Angel of Death has, I think, just now finally rebuilt his... He's now rebuilt his air production. Um, and... Matry wants to start causing problems el elsewhere. But big push here from Fergus. So that is two GCs with a lot of Tech 3. So Fergus finally traded in the 95 Civic. 
Good on you, man. I think you'll find that the 2023 model drives a little bit better. Just a little bit. Though I don't think they come in manual, though, anymore. Which sucks for me. I'm fully aware that manual is slower than automatic in almost every respect. And I don't care. I just, I like driving manual. So no, I'm not somebody that's like, well, I do it because it's faster. I do it because I genuinely enjoy it. That's going to be two GCs there. There are quite a few bricks here in defense. These are bricks, right? Yep, those are bricks. Those aren't harbs. Bricks here for Matry. We also have a Monkey Lord. It should also be noted that one of these GCs is pretty badly damaged. But Fergus is going to go for it. As Millenwise going to go crush the gunships there for Angel of Death. Just they absolutely vaporize off the screen. But 2GC push here from Fergus. He's going in. There is uh, Azar. And uh, that's going to... I think that Fergus needs to back off because Obi cannot help out that Azar at all. Just not necessarily in a great position to do so. Both Matry... As Matry's making a heart there with his uh, ASF. It's not Valentine's Day, dude. We got a couple more months. Zara's still going to get some work in, though. And uh, looks like it's going to take out one of the GCs, maybe. There is ground-based AA. Uh, actually, a good amount of flak that's starting to eat through that shield. But I don't think it's going to be enough to... Yeah, it's not going to be enough to save the GC, I don't think. Especially whenever the GC is running away from the AA. Yeah, it's like, I'm trying to help you. Oh, okay. Donut's just gonna head off to another to another area. As in the middle, Sapir making another push with his own GC. Fergus has a GC here in support on Obi's base. X is going down once again. Ithoda nearly completed, so Ithoda combined with that GC. Actually, that, that GC is heavily damaged from Sapir. So it looks like it fought another Ithoda down here, and Fergus has got another GC. Jesus Christ, how many GCs does, does this man have? He's got a lot. GC from Sapir, gonna go down though. Millen wise continuing to crush air wherever he can. So at least at least team two got a little bit of trade here. Well, actually they didn't even get a GC. They decided not to kill it. So there's two heavily damaged GCs here now. That Fergus can now control K in his base. Those gravity hands, since they gave them that rework, so good. Like, just absolute madness. That was like 30 bricks. Jeez. Dota there from Angel of Death going to come in and finish up the work as well. And those gravity hands that ever since they reworked that like a couple months ago uh, to where I think now it actually works like GC's like really damn good against tech three units. It's actually pretty crazy. Let's check on eco. Real quick, Team 1 continuing to pull ahead now. 25, 250,000 mass up. And they are putting that into an emissary that Fergus has now just started. As he's continuing to expand his family of Galactic Colossus. He's like, uh, what's his name from X-Men? I think it's Tin Man. The Tin Dude. It's like if that dude had babies. Meanwhile, down here, actually, Matry working on his own emissary. Much... Much further along, almost halfway done. 
And we have another donut coming out. And that is a nuke as well out from Millen Wise that we didn't scout, that we didn't talk about earlier. We've been so busy talking about all the land engagements that have been happening all over the place. SMDs though, we got an SMD here, one here, and oh, the nuke is going that way. Oh, Angel of Death needs to start moving before he goes and meets the Angel of Death. Okay, there he goes. Now he's starting to move. I didn't see the actual nuke icon. Okay, the nuke is actually going to land to the south, so Angel of Death's just fine. A nuke gonna land though, take out uh, more Tech 3 manufacturing there for Angel of Death. What do you think it's like if you're trying to hire somebody? It's like, yeah, we want you to work in our air factory. Oh, well, why are you hiring people? Well, the last 12 air factories that we built got bombed or nuked to dust, so we have great benefits though. Our life insurance policy is just, ah. Pristine. Carpenter is going to take out an Athoda down there. Obi got another Athoda though. Headed in to support Fergus now. Squaring up here with four GCs. That is a that is a man's land army right there. Aside from the fact that it's Aeon, we'll forgive him that one. That is crazy. Two monkey lords that you can see there from Matry in the background. And we have another Ithoda actually from Angel of Death back here. Um, but they can't really... How much MAA is in here? We have a couple of Redeemers and then some Flak. But I don't know if that's going to be enough to deal with the two Zars that are about to drop on top of them. And Obi has another Awasa it sounds like. I'm gonna stay focused on this though for now. As one of the Zars dropping actually really quickly, so it looks like there was enough MAA here. That is, it's hard to tell. I think the first Zar is. Okay, so first Zar is at almost 25% HP. One GC is down, second one soon to follow. Actually, might be, and then third one actually right after that. As both Zars. Gonna go down here actually in relatively quick succession. Thanks to ASFs that have just shown up from Angel of Death. But the other thing that showed up from Angel of Death is this Athoda. Uh, that GC is pretty heavily damaged here. So it's not gonna be able to help out a whole lot. Athoda's gonna have to do a lot of the heavy lifting here. As this Awasa is continuing to bombard Matri's base. And it looks like Obi won a pretty critical air engagement here, along with Angel of Death, as Villainwise and Matry's ASF are nowhere to be found. Matry has what looks like a strat run going on the bottom. And that push there is going to go down. Check in on the strats in just a second. As this is an unholy amount of reclaim. Like, that, that's... Quick math here. 300,000 reclaim. Easy that has now been deposited on Matry's doorstep. This Awasa is still causing problems though, and strap bombers are gonna fly over a ton of Tech 3 static AA. I don't think any of those make it to their target. That's like worse than in the most recent Top Gun movie. It'd be cool if you could get flares in this game completely broken and imbalanced but it'd be cool nonetheless meanwhile artillery has gone up here for matry looks like the artillery is going after oh the emissary there from fergus that is actually dangerously exposed god there's so much to keep up with in this game this is why i don't like casting higher level games everybody's too good they give me too much to focus on all right awasa control k over millen wise's air grid millen wise going to lose more of his air grid I'm not sure what he lost the first part to. I think it was an Awasa bomb, as that Awasa has been bumping around up there for a while. But Millen Wise, retaining his HQ, uh, has lost a lot of his air production. So that's going to leave it to Matry to be able to pick up the slack a little bit on the air side. Matry's starting to queue up some of these little air grid templates. It looks like he's built out. 
And artillery previously exposed. It looks like Fergus has got it shielded now. Got a couple shields. Third one on the way. Or fourth one, sorry. Fifth. Whatever. More shielding is coming. And Matry looking a little bit more peaked there on the shielding front. Is that exposed at all? I don't think it is. No. It's not that back shield covers it, so... Emissary is safe there. As on the front lines, we have got Ravager Creep coming in from OB. OB has another Awasa. Decided that team number two wasn't clean enough. Need another ass washer to run them over. I'm actually surprised that didn't just vaporize that entire force. Mobile shield's doing work there. Strays over Tech 3 Sam's though. Takes a little bit of damage there. Matry might have enough ASFs to just go for a dive on the Awasa. But right now, not posing too much of a threat. So looking to save his Air Force. Or his Air Force is going to get caught napping here by Obi. As Obi moving in his ASF cleans up. Or begins to clean up Matry's Air Force. Sapier also in the Tech 3 air phase. I'm seeing him have a couple of ASF bouncing around. We have got another army from Fergus up here with a newly minted GC. All this reclaim is still sitting here. And Angel of Death going in with strats as well. Flying over a lot of Sams though. We'll see how many of them make it to their target or what their target is. And the answer is none of them. None of them make it to their target. Meanwhile, Matry lost a pretty significant portion of his base to the artillery fire. You see uh, that he is having trouble curving. Finally deals with the Awasa with Static Sams. He also has a chicken down here. Oh, there's so much happening in this game. GC from Sapier is going to be able to handle that. Fergus, meanwhile, pushing in with a huge force to the north. Harbs, sniper bots, mobile shields, Tech 3 mobile AA, and... I, there's, I don't know how much there is that's going to be able to stop this. Uh, there's GC that is nearly done in two places. One for Matry and one for Sapier. As Fergus' army ends up coming in. Brick's now getting redirected there from Matry. To try and deal with it. GC with, of course, its vacuum cleaner hands. That one, that GC does finish for Sapier, and that is just in the nick of time. That is just what Sapier needed here to save what will maybe be left of his base here. Tech 1 PD getting rushed up as well by the Tech 3 engineers, as well as some Oblivion turrets there in the background. Now it looks like Sapier going to lose a lot of stuff here. Fergus not really doing himself any favors, though, taking out the power grid. Well, I guess it's some favor, but kills a lot of his own units. Last couple point defense going to be getting spammed up here as much as they can. Sapier going to trade his GC. One for Fergus just now going down. Even the commander there for Sapier showing up. But... There is little rest here for the weary as two more chickens just now popping up here for Sapier and or, uh, for Obi to push into Sapier's base. And Sapier hadn't even had a chance to breathe from the last attack. This is looking like a very, very difficult situation as Matry has also lost his artillery. chicken down to the south two chickens in the middle i'm sure fergus is doing something up here no he's not all right never mind i thought fergus had another had another land army almost ready to go it seems like every time i turn around he's got seven gcs ready ready to ram down team two's throat this is looking pretty untenable though as i think that was a support commander that's going pop oh no that's millen wise going for a teleport 
on Obi's base. So that was, I think, their last ditch attempt here. As Matri and Sapir hold hands to the bitter end. That's going to be Matri control K-ing and Sapir, I'm sure, is soon to follow. Actually, Obi going to take care of it for him and control K and Owasa right on his head. What a great way to finish that game. <laughs> that was a great game. There's so much going on. Whenever I was watching the replay, I don't think I was actually computing like how much was going on until I was having to talk about it. I was like, holy crap. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the replay. Um, yeah, if you guys have other replays that you want me to look at, send them my way. I'll take a look at them, whether you want me to review them and see if I can give you any tips. I'm not a great player, but I try to help where I can. Um, or if you want to be cast, uh, best way to do get these replays to me is, well, the best way to be casted, like period, by anybody is send them to the FAF replay uh, Discord channel. Um, and if you're not part of the FAF Discord, you can get there on the FAF, FAF website. Um, if you want to be casted by me particularly, you can send me the replay file, uh, the URL uh, to a particular game, just as long as it doesn't, as long as it doesn't desync and as long as it's an interesting game, I will be able to cast it. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.